Now, one last thing uh, before we go on to the next problem. The arrows on the graph are important. Uh, when I'm grading, I usually count one, one point for uh, drawing the correct arrows, and it's called orientation. So there are two ways to orient a curve. Uh, by drawing arrows on, you're picking one of those two ways. Uh, so I want you to, uh, if you're graphing parametric equations, make sure that the arrows are on your graph so I know which way uh, the curve should be oriented. Another way of thinking about this, this could describe the position of a particle or animal or vehicle, or it could describe the position of something, uh, a planet, based on the t parameter, which you can think of as time. So maybe this is the orbit of a planet based on different time uh, points in time right there. Uh, orbits are not, uh, are not parabola shaped. Um, they're well, either ellipses or, or close to ellipses. Um, but this is describing the uh, change in position of something uh, where t is the time parameter. So we're going to now take a a set of parametric equations, and we're going to find a rectangular equation. So given parametric equations, I'll write it in rectangular form. Be very specific, right in rectangular equation. All right, so what parametric equations we're going to start with? Let's go x equals a sine t and y equals a cosine t. All right, so we got parametric equations, two equations. They got one of them has x, one of them has y and both of them have the parameter t. Now a, in this case, a is a constant. It'll be greater than zero, a is a constant. Uh, you can just think of the number one, uh, that works too. All right, so how do we take two equations and eliminate a variable? The two standard ways to do it. it. One of them is elimination, the other one's substitution. Uh, so the way substitution works is you solve for t in one equation and plug that into the other equation. So let's go the substitution route. So we want to eliminate the t variable. Can't just erase it, but we can use substitution. All right, this is the worst way to go, the worst of the two ways to go in this particular problem, but I want you to see it worked out. All right, might as well solve for t in the first one. They're pretty much the same difficulty to solve for t. So how do we solve for t? We're trying to rescue the t, get everything else out. So we're going to get a out of here. So first thing, divide both sides by a. Now, how do we get sine out of here? We go arc sine or sine inverse. So there we go, we solve for t, and now what we're gonna do is plug this in, plug into y equals a cos t. So we're plugging in this mess right where I see t. So better use some parentheses because it's gonna get complicated. All right, we have eliminated the t variable. So this is technically a, uh, a single rectangular equation. Rectangular, because all we have is x's and y's and the constant a. Uh, the reason it's not polar, we got no r's, we got no thetas, so it's not a polar equation. It's definitely a rectangular equation, uh, but this is a really, really horrible form. 
how did we deal with this situation before? Cosine of sine inverse. So this is trig of an inverse trig function. We can simplify this down. So let's go ahead, I'll switch to blue here. This is a purely trigonometric process we're about to do here. So I'm going to simplify. All right, so we'll just shift right over to here. Now, how do we do this? Sine inverse, the output of sine inverse is an angle. So what I just underlined, I'm going to let theta equal sine inverse x over a. Yes, I am using uh, theta here because uh, we're gonna look at angles for a minute. So this gets way back to chapter 10. So sine, let's flip this around. This means sine theta equals x over a. And this is opposite over hypotenuse. So we got a, opposite side is x. This remaining side is square root. So I don't want to use the letter y. Uh, let's go with z, that works. So z squared plus x squared equals a squared. And we want to know what is z. So z squared is a squared minus x squared. z equals plus or minus square root. a squared minus x squared. Uh, on these, you can, uh, anytime there's an inverse trig function, you just choose the positive one. Uh, whenever you're doing this uh, simplification. Whenever it's trig of trig inverse, you're just gonna go and pick the positive, a squared minus x squared. All right, and so what I underlined, this sine inverse x over a, this is theta, that's what we did right here. Theta is sine inverse x over a. So what is cosine theta? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is adjacent is that square root a squared minus x squared divided by a. All right, so that was a lot of work to simplify uh, this whole thing right here. So let's go ahead and Write that in here. So first thing you notice, A is gonna cancel out. So this looks like it got a little bit better. Uh, we got Y squared equals square root A squared minus X squared. Getting closer, I don't really like square roots, so let's square both sides of the equation. Y squared equals, now I'm squaring a square root, the reason I did that is because it's going to cancel. I don't have to do any foiling. That square root just cancels the squared. And last step, let's add x squared to the other side. Wow. Again, we still have rectangular equation. Very different form though. What, uh, what would this graph as? Well, if we look at this, if a was one, I would have the unit circle. And as it turns out, I have a circle centered at the origin with a radius A. So if I wanted to graph this, oh, that makes my axes look bad. All right, circle centered at the origin. That's better. All right, so that's A, 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 oh, that's minus A. Minus A. All right, a very Canadian circle. There we go. That's the graph of this, and much, much nicer in this form right here. All right, so this was substitution. There's a way better way to do this using elimination. Maybe I should write instead of eliminate. Um, Wait, we did substitution. Now we'll eliminate the t variable using elimination. So 
So I'm just gonna rewrite the uh, first two. X equals A sine T. So elimination, uh, you were taught a very narrow range of what you're allowed to do with elimination. Uh, you were probably only taught to add or subtract. Uh, maybe add or subtract multiples of these. Let's expand it. I can, uh, of course, I'm, I can add or subtract the two equations together. But another thing I can do is uh, I can perform an operation on them, like uh, square each one individually, and then add them together. Now, why might that be useful? Well, let's look at, you know, I'm trying to eliminate t right here. So just adding or subtracting these two equations is not going to get me very far at all. Uh, to eliminate t. What type of relationship do sine and cosine have? How can I write those two in a way that, that will cancel them out? Well, the only thing that really comes to mind is sine squared plus cosine squared. So this is supposed to be a thought bubble. So that's one way to cancel out sine and cosine. Now, unfortunately, we've got A next to both of these. So this could be, uh, take this whole thing, multiply it by A squared. So that will look like A squared sine squared T plus A squared cos squared T equals one times A squared, which is A squared. All right, so what we're gonna do is square each of these and add them together. So square the first one, x squared equals a sine t squared, which we'll write as a squared sine squared t. So that's x squared. And the other one, y squared equals a cos t squared, which is a squared cos squared t. And all we're gonna do is add these equations together. And I think elimination was written something like this. So we're adding these two together. On the left side, we get x squared plus y squared. On the right side, factor out the a squared. And sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so this is just a squared. Another nice shortcut you can use if you notice, I didn't write anything right here because I never changed the left side of this new equation. So whenever you don't make any changes, you can just save a little time and not write anything down. All right, so this is our rectangular equation. Now there is one thing I forgot to do on that really fast graph I threw together. What is the one thing I forgot to do? I did not mention where the t values come from. So if you ever have a problem where they don't say where the t values come from, the uh, unwritten t values just come from the entire real interval, negative infinity to positive infinity, meaning they don't start anywhere in particular, but they do always go in an increasing direction. So what's lacking on this graph is the orientation or the arrows. So the question is, is it gonna spin that way or the opposite way? Now this can be hard to see. So what I recommend doing is just pick, picking two t values very close together that are easy to graph and then plot to uh, two points, two points that are very close together. So 
let's see. I'm going to put plot two. Uh, I'm going to call them adjacent points. They're not actually adjacent. They're just close, um, which is how we use adjacent anyways. So I'm going to plot two adjacent. And we're using clueless method. So we got T and then X is a cos sine and Y is a cos T. Now I can pick any T values I want. I'm going to pick the easiest ones because I've already thought enough on this section. So I'm going to go zero, five or six. You can pick, uh, if you want to get fancy, you can do five pi over six and pi over two. You can do pi over three, uh, pi over two. There's there's a few different, you want to make sure they're close though. You don't want to choose zero and pi. Those would actually give you points, not necessarily these two points, but zero and pi will give you points on the opposite sides of the circle, which is exactly because uh, you know information on the orientation. All right, so a sine t, so sine of zero is zero. So that's x, cosine of zero is one. So our y equals one. So our first point, zero, one. Next point, pi over six. Probably don't have room to write this, so I'll simplify it down here. Sine pi over six is a equals, uh, sine pi over six is one half. So this will be a over two. And a cos pi over six is a square root three over two, and that doesn't really reduce at all. All right, so one, uh, zero, one, super easy to plot. 